Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. A while ago I took a class from Molly Winton who is here with me today and she has infected me with wood burning or what's the other word? Branding pyrography. Okay, you anyway, she's, she's got me infected with it and wanted to introduce her today and have her show you your, which brand is it? Basket Weave Brand. Basket Weave Brand. And uh, actually get it straight from well, you do st horses too. Don't the horses, right? So straight from the horses' straight mouth. Straight from the horses' mouth. Well, you're not offended by that. Not offended okay, at all. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's show you how to make the brand and then to use it. Great. Okay, we're going to make a basket weave brand using uh, 20 gauge nichrome wire, and this is my mandrel that I wrap it around, and all it is is a repurposed drill bit that has this hex on the end because I can then anchor the wire which is round to a flat surface in order to hold that wire as I wrap it. So I'm going to lay about one inch down the body of the, um, the hex end and then use a pair of vice grips to lock that wire firmly onto the mandrel. Then I'm going to wrap the, the long portion of the wire around the mandrel five times. I found that the size I want, I get with five wraps. And so there's one, two, three, four, and five. And I make sure that my coils are snug up against each preceding one. When I'm finished wrapping those five, I want to make sure that the long portion of the wire is on the same plane as where the wire came into the, the mandrel so that they're not in opposite directions when I use the brand. Remove the vice grips, slide the, that off the mandrel, and now my legs are uh, perpendicular and I want them parallel so that they'll fit into the wood burning pen. So I'm going to take some needle nose pliers and hold on to the coil just firmly enough to hold that so that when I bend the leg parallel it's not going to splay out the coils and distort the brand. Once the legs are parallel, I'm going to trim them so that they're about an inch to three quarters of an inch long. You don't want them much longer than that. And there is your brand. So now we'll put that in the wood burning pen. This is a homemade pen because when I brand for many, many hours, I need an ergonomically designed one, so I make this one myself. But you can also get commercially made interchangeable tip pens if you don't want to or don't need to make a pen on your own. But they work exactly the same. You drop the two legs down into the terminals, tighten the set screws, just snug, not too tight. And uh, then I turn my heat on my transformer all the way up high. And pretty soon that will get cherry red. You need it pretty hot because you want quick recovery time. That means that once you have, there's its cherry red, once you've touched it once with the brand and go to the second touch, you don't want any hesitation in the heat. So that's why you need it as hot as possible. So I'm just doing one row all with an orientation vertical because I like to have a border on my pieces. And it's a good way to align when I start changing the orientation to make it look like the woven basket. This first row vertical helps me line up subsequent rows. Molly, what do you generally do about all that smoke that's coming off? Yeah, there's a lot of smoke being generated, and it's really important. When I do this um, on a piece that I'm working on, I wear a respirator. 
um, because you do not want to inhale this, both for your lung protection as well as your sinus protection. And so it's important that you're in a well-ventilated area. Um, and I have a, a fan, a draw fan, that um, will pull the smoke away from my workspace rather than blow across it, because if it blows across your workspace, you're going to cool down the tip. So you want the draw fan to pull away from you and pull that smoke out of your face and out of your um, work area. So that's a very important safety tip when you're burning to really pay attention to how that smoke is um, released. So, on, um, so now that I have uh, the vertical row, the next row is where I'm going to start doing the um, changing the orientation to get the woven look. So the, I'm going to do two vertical touches right underneath two of the ones on the, above it. Then I'm going to rotate my piece so that my next two touches are horizontal. Switch back to vertical and then to horizontal and continue this pattern of two vertical to horizontal until this second row is completed. How are you stabilizing your pen? You might you can see that the the side of my hand is resting on my work piece. When I have a round um, piece that I'm working on, one of my turned pieces, I do the exact same thing. I anchor my hand to that to get as steady as possible and sometimes I even put my little finger out like an outrigger so that um, it just gives me as much steady control of where that brand is making contact with the wood. And it's really, it helps to make sure that your alignment stays true and you just have more control. So once that second row has been completed, you go on to row number three, and right where you had two vertical touches, now you're going to go right directly underneath that to two horizontal touches. And then continue on with that same alternating pattern of vertical to horizontal. The reason that I do five coils when I was making the brand is that with that length of the brand, which is approximately a quarter of an inch long, it gives me a width touch of about an eighth of an inch. And so I want my woven pattern to square up when I have two uh, vertical touches, when I go right di directly below it with two horizontal, I want them to be squared off as closely as possible so that they, the woven look stays aligned. You're not limited to that. It's, you're only limited by your imagination of what you want to make, but you can do all kinds of variations of this particular brand by leaving gaps in between coils or not you're doing four or three or seven, changing it however you want it to look. So now I've got three rows. My fourth row, again, I'm just going to do the, sa the same thing that I did before. When I have two horizontal, now I'm going to go two vertical under that. And you'll now you're starting to see the overall pattern of the woven look because I've got three lines now, much more detailed example of how that becomes woven. I also find that I touch and just barely overlap to just touch and then I, that helps me avoid um, unburned wood gaps in between here. Here's an example. There's a, a little missed corner right there that I missed. So all I have to do is take the edge of the, the brand and just gently touch that and that covers it up and you'll not notice that in the overall pattern once you get finished with the, this section. Molly, what gauge wire did you use for that again? This particular one is 20 gauge.
can you use a different gauge? You can. And what I've um, found, I tend to use a um, either the 20 gauge is kind of my standard uh, size if I want to reduce down or scale down. Um, sometimes I'll use a 22 gauge wire. The higher the number, the thinner the wire. Um, very, very rarely do I go up to 18 gauge, primarily because the commercial um, wood burning units, the more volume of wire you use, the harder you get for the uh, recovery time and uh, th that where it heats up and so it tends to be a little cumbersome and a much slower process to use. So most of the time I use 20 gauge for almost everything and then 22 to scale if I have a more complex design or I want to scale down in size. So, so there is an example of the basket weave and that's what you do. So here's an example of a completed piece with the basket weave on it. And this particular uh, piece is about 8 inches in diameter and probably about 10 or 11 inches tall. And so the scale was a little bit larger than <clears throat> my kind of my smaller 6 to 8 inch um, pieces. And so I actually increased the size of the mandrel that I wrapped the 20 gauge wire around to get the uh, the brand to scale up and be a little bit bigger. So that's how you can also modify or change uh, the basket weave brand depending on the size of the piece you're working on. I have some very tiny miniatures that are only one and a half to two inches tall and that's when I scale way down and use the 22 gauge wire and a smaller mandrel like a 1 16th inch diameter um, uh, drill bit that I convert into the, the mandrel. The standard size that I make tends to be, I think I use a 5 64th inch drill bit, um, but again you don't have to specifically have those, just find a smaller and a little bit larger and play and experiment on what you want. Um, so that's this, the example of a little bit scaled up. Here's that border that I told you that I showed you on the practice board so that when I then started my first row of the basket weave I could align it to um, to the border and then of course you can see examples as you kind of go down here how that weave is created. In this particular design I do the basket weave on the bottom two-thirds of the piece and then I have my my mustangs or my horses above that. So here's another example. Here's more a standard size that I tend to make. More is probably about five and a half to six inches tall, maybe four inches in diameter. And the the basket weave brand that I uh, demonstrated is the exact same size that I used on this piece. So it's a 20 gauge wire on the uh, 5 64th inch uh, mandrel. And uh, so it's kind of my standard size brand. And here's a perfect example of how that looks on this particular piece. You can see again, here's my border. I do the same thing on the bottom of the piece too. I bring the, the border around the foot of the piece because as I come down and do the branding, and I, I'm, there's no guarantee that it's going to be an even finish at the bottom and so when I get to probably I don't know maybe two-thirds of the way down my basket weave I stop and I put that vertical border around the foot so that as my rows come down to that border I can blend it in and on that very last row and if you can see right here's the last full basket weave and then there's like a half of a row. And on this case, I may, on the horizontal uh, touch, I did one rather than two. On the vertical, I tipped the brand up on its end and just had about three coils touch the wood. And then that blends, blends into that. And there's that one.
With that, we'll see you again next week with another wood turning video. I love feedback via your comments. Please like this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. <laughs>